Well, the digital clock in the back of the room indicates that it's now 4.30. <laughs> I'm going to call the meeting of the Moore Public Service Commission to order. Could I have a motion, please, concerning this evening's agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Excuse me. Hold. Do you want to add uh, the secretary position? What if we say no? Well, okay. then we can't sign agreements. Mr. Schwant would like us to add uh, uh, something to our agenda. I move to approve the agenda with the addition of a motion to appoint a temporary secretary. Okay, we'll make that an item um, 8H. Okay, with that change, could I have a motion to approve our agenda? Okay. Did we, do we have, still have a motion to approve the agenda? Okay. I, I changed the motion to include the, uh, the addition of okay. that. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Okay, I thought you might. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. That motion carries. Could I have a similar motion, please, concerning our consent agenda? to approve the consent agenda is presented. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed the same sign, that motion carries. Brings us down to customers to be heard or recognitions. Bill, are there either of the above? No, I don't have any uh, of either of those. Okay, any old business, Bill? No. Members of the City Council, Heidi, what have you got to report? I just have one quick thing to report. Last night at uh, the City Council meeting, we approved a uh, grant application for the railroad grade separation at 11th Street and the 20th, 21st underpass as well. Um, Bob Zimmerman found, in, in collaborating with MnDOT, found a grant pool, a larger grant pool, uh, that we would have access to if we combined the projects together. So putting them together puts the tab over 100 million and then it gives us access to this bigger pool of, of grant money. So uh, we are going to apply, uh, send in uh, the, the grant application and see what happens. We've been denied four times, I think, for the Tiger Grant, which is a smaller amount. That was just the 20th, 21st underpass. It was a smaller amount of money, about 56 million. Uh, they, are, they were quite, uh, quite picky and selective in those, and we think we have a better chance being this is a bigger project. So it would come in two phases. The 20th, 21st underpass would be done first, and after that is fully complete, then uh, they would move on to the So you have a better chance if you ask for more money? Uh, apparently, isn't, isn't in, that the way it works? Interesting philosophy, yes. <laughs> Good luck, believe me, we but need I, it. I, I know that Ralph had been concerned in the past about um, some utility infrastructure underneath um, the uh, the current underpass and that having to be relocated and, and moved and uh, so I just wanted to make sure you were aware that there is a new grant out. And, uh, do you do you know if that grant request would include more public services costs? I am letting you know so that you can hopefully reach out and make sure that that's okay. So, we, Bill, would you try to reach out to somebody? Yeah, I can do that. I mean, I've been in contact with Bob Z about the whole project. This is new to me, but um, we've talked about the, the project. And I would assume that we would have similar issues at a second location for a great... Travis Street? Yes. Would we or would we not? Travis, I think, was smirking. I, I <laughs> well, yeah, but that's... I won't for, go there. For the length of the <laughs> excavation that will be necessary, I would think there would be plenty of issues for it us. It would be a couple blocks, three blocks long, I believe, mm -hmm. north and south. Would we have similar issues at 11th? Um, we won't have as many issues because we don't have a transmission, transmission line. line. Uh, I should pronounce myself. So Travis Schmidt, electrical engineering manager. Um, we'll have some distribution and, and possibly some feeder relocation stuff that needs to occur because of that. Um, we'll either have to bore it deeper in the ground or go overhead, of course, but um, we haven't looked at that as close because it, from past conversations with uh, Bob Zimmerman, it was further in the future that we would do that. So the big, the big key one was 2021st Street, um, great okay. separation. We water issues. Would we have water issues, Chris? Thank you, Travis. Well, 
Chris Knudsen, Water Division Manager, uh, similar to Electric Division, we'd have some relocations, but they wouldn't be as significant as the ones on 20, 21st. We have two transmission lines at 20th, 21st. Um, on 11th Street, it'd just be trans, um, smaller transmission lines. Still okay. have to relocate, but wouldn't be as significant. Okay. Well, it might be something we should start looking into, gentlemen. Thank you. Anything further, Heidi? No. Okay, thank you very much. Members of the Public Service Commission, anything to report? I can wait for budget. Okay. No, I don't have anything. Chris, did you have something? I do. Uh, the uh, Tower Art Project. The uh, Tower Art Committee met last week and we sort of sketched out an overall strategy and timeline. Um, we're gonna meet again tomorrow to take into account some of the things that we talked about at our first meeting. And um, it looks like we've got a process in place to um, uh, prepare for holding community open house regarding the design of the tower. And um, we spent some time talking about potential funding sources. Um, it's gonna be tough for the first tower, um, but we looked long term and looked at possibly contacting the FM Area Foundation for some of the subsequent towers. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? William, General Manager's report. Just a, a couple of items that are not on the uh, agenda. Um, and one of the items on the agenda, I guess I should talk about, is we did give an update on the Oakport Service Territory transfer from Red River Valley Cooperative Power Association to us. And uh, you can read those details. I think Travis is gonna next month like, give a, or the next meeting, make a little bit more of a detailed uh, review of the whole uh, transfer that occurred this year. And we also had a uh, meeting with XL Energy this week, and that meeting went really well. And uh, we'll be having another meeting probably in January or February to go over more of the details. Um, but they actually did a, a very business-like, very well done uh, analysis of their public cost of service study that they used to develop the uh, loss of revenue calculation. And it came in you know, roughly a third less than what the cooperative uh, came in at. So we'll still review some of their numbers and that type of thing, work with the committee uh, of Ralph and Ken, talk about that a bit, but I, we were, uh, Travis and I were in that meeting and we were pleasantly surprised at how well uh, uh, professional that Excel was and the numbers that they came up with. So, um, and those meetings will continue. So. Okay. Please keep us advised on that. The other item that I wanted to just briefly talk about, and, and annually on your, um, at your December meeting, we typically look at the meetings of the commission. And I wanted you to at least think about the possibility of having one meeting a month uh, with a, you know, maybe the second meeting could be a, you know, a meeting that we could call if we needed it. Um, the council is trying that right now. I don't know if you want to talk to your council counterparts to see how that's uh, going. Uh, but typically they've, they've uh, had four meetings a month and we've had two. I believe they've got one formal and one informal now. Um, and so uh, it's something I think to look at. And uh, maybe I'll talk with the chair uh, over this next couple of weeks and uh, I'll bring it up again at the next meeting. Okay. That's all I had. You know that the chair has expressed his opinion in the past on that same subject, so we can have that conversation. Yeah, well, and it's a, it's, it's kind of a, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other uh, for us as well, because it does help us communicate more with the commission, which is a nice thing, but it does end up, you know, uh, taking time to prepare the agenda and that type of thing too, so. Um, just something to think about, and, and the chairman and I will talk about that. Okay. Anything further? No. That brings us down to uh, item 8G, which is to accept report number four on the proposed 2017 budget. Mr. Anderson, you indicated you were going to wait with your comments until we got to this number. I, I, didn't have I, to will, I will now turn to you. 
Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm glad to introduce this, uh, this topic. We have uh, plenty of staff with us as well. Um, the, uh, the paperwork is uh, also in your packet. Our, at our last meeting, um, uh, after uh, following the, the, the public hearing, and uh, you know, where we received you know, a, a little bit of input, but um, uh, and then two or three letters is, is really all that we got this time. Um, we felt uh, th that we should still be, be looking at how to make the budget maybe a little bit more trim, uh, as, uh, particularly on the increases that were outlined uh, that evening. And uh, um, we, I, I think we knowingly had gone into the meeting thinking that the, the, the proposal was a little strong. Um, uh, and and we've, we've, we've come to that conclusion as a committee and we're recommending uh, to, to the whole group that rather than a four and a half percent increase on electric that we, uh, that we uh, bring that down to three and a half percent. Um, the water increase uh, we, we chose to, to leave at the six and a half percent that was that was proposed that 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 translates into about a two dollar increase per month uh, for for our customers and uh, uh, while I, I understand the two dollars doesn't sound like a lot I, I, I understand that you know for for some of our customers out there that two dollars is, is significant so um, it is it is with uh, with concern uh, for them uh, that, that we that we continue to, to recommend that level, but at at the electric level, we thought that uh, uh, four and a half was was a bit strong, and with our schedule of anticipated increases based on our wholesale costs and so forth, we're looking at uh, about three percent uh, another year out, and I think about two percent a year beyond that as we look to the next couple of fiscal years. That does slow down. Um, the, the goal that we've spent a lot of time talking about with, with regard to our reserves. Um, you know, we, we're on a track to, to rebuild the reserves because we've, we've been using them. Um, but it didn't appear that that percentage point in the rate increase that was outlined for the public hearing uh, was going to be that much more aggressive at rebuilding the reserves than, than what we've come up with uh, as a schedule for rebuilding reserves. So. Um, that's kind of a nutshell uh, of, 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 of our most recent meeting. It was really based on what the input had been. Uh, we had heard from, from PACTIV. Um, our Anheuser-Busch friends were in the audience that night, but they chose not to, not to speak. Um, uh, but uh, I was glad that they were here to, to at least participate as, mm -hmm. as, uh, as listeners that evening. Uh, a, few, uh, a few comments um, uh, received uh, via mail uh, prior to this meeting. And I'm sure you've already seen those. So, uh, with that, I'd uh, I'd throw it open to uh, to Nancy or Bill to 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 add to what I've presented as a summary, but um, or any questions that you guys might have. I just want to make a comment. Um, in the intervening period between our last meeting and this meeting, I think most of us in the community have received a uh, Merry Christmas letter from Clay County with regard to anticipated taxes and assessments payable in the forthcoming year. Because a number of people that, that I talk with have certainly mentioned it, and, and uh, the, the two uh, special assessments uh, for the school district, for example, you add that to the tax, and I, in, in our household, that's a 30% increase over what we paid last year. And and I look at the people, and I come from the first ward, but I look at the people who live in that ward who are on fixed incomes and those who are on Social Security increases, which. Uh, and as, as I mentioned before, the $6 a month increase is actually twice what those people are going to experience in terms of an increase in their Social Security. So you take all of these various fees and taxes and increases in rates together, we, we, do, we really truly do have to see that we can minimize things as much as possible because there's a great number of people in this community who simply cannot afford what is being imposed on them and they really don't have much much voice and so we have to also be that voice in the past I've been the one who have probably talked most about reducing the impacts of these rate increases but we really have to take a good hard look at that we truly do because people are making choices in our community that maybe they shouldn't be forced to make and so we have to also look at we look at our capital budgets. We look at everything else. We have to look look at what our wants are and what our needs are, and make sure that we're not imposing anything greater 
on the people of this community than we have to. And that's my only comment. I know that you guys are working hard on it, but it uh, that truly weighs heavily on me. And if you look at some of the, the three notes that we got, we're all very, very articulate in their positions on, you know, this group taking a good hard look at what we're going to do in terms of increases. And it's not something that's being made in a vacuum, and it, it's certainly not monopoly money that we're talking about here, but we are imposing things on families within our community. That's well, my only comment. One of the letters in particular, you know, I, I, I would point out, you know, uh, asks us to, to not raise the rates, but, but even to consider, you know, reductions. And, um, you know, while, while I would be enthusiastic about reductions, um, the ramifications of that need a lot more conversation before, before I would get serious about about proposing reductions because that has has real consequences for our for our partners you know at City Hall, um, and and so uh, it, it, we read the letters you know we you know we, we did pay attention uh, to the letters um, if if we didn't have to also uh, maintain and replace so that we can continue to provide. Uh, a, a, a quality, uh, reliable uh, system of, you know, of water and electrical services. Um, uh, you know, we, we can't do that and, and hold where we are. You know, we, we can't we can't continue to be reliable if we don't reinvest. And and so as as we're as we're going down the road, I think we have to do as much as we can with as little as we can, and to try to make you know that impact you know, as, as uh, the, the least that, that it can possibly be. So um, uh, we we felt strongly by the end of uh, our last meeting that that we were making a, a good recommendation that was going to be good for our customers, uh, good for the utility, good for the for the community. So. Well, I appreciate the fact that you ratcheted down to some degree at least that rate increase. Uh, proposed rate increase and uh, as you said we all read these letters and so if there's anybody out there who wants to send comments to us during this waiting period please please do so because we are owned by the people of this community and it is our obligation to to serve them so that's all I'm going to say on the subject and I do appreciate the work you're putting in on that I really do okay. yes John I don't know if Heidi, if you've gotten copies of the letters here, but I think it's important for you to share that to the rest of the council of the impact that, the significant impact that it has on PACTIV, as long as they had the, the rental units that are out in the community as well as, I think you can tell by the other two letters they're from, um, from their information are on social security. So, um, it is, it is a concern as well as far as the rates that we have and the impact that it has on the, the users. So it, I think it would be appropriate for you to share that. You know, it, sometimes it's too easy for us to say, well, we need to do this, so therefore we raise the rates. We have to stop and think about those impacts, whether it is the person on Social Security on a fixed income who's getting a, a $3 increase thanks to the federal government uh, this year, as well as our major customers in this community who then will make decisions as whether or not to remain in this community. And so from that standpoint, we have a balancing act here. All I ask is that we as a commission balance all of those uh, issues as best we possibly can before we make a decision. So anything for the, uh, Heidi, I'm sorry, you wanted to make a comment. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at page nine. Um, of the agenda item and I'm looking at a, a, a second bullet that says uh, a decrease from 200 a decrease in the increase from 255,000 increase down to a $236,000 increase to the city of Moorhead to that to the transfer um, what is the floor what did what did we agree that we would never go below that is the one word. Yeah, Nancy might have that right next to you there. Nancy Lund, admin and finance manager. Um, that number there is fluctuating because it's the capital improvement transfer that is based on revenues. So that slight decrease there is cost for, by that. The general fund transfer, I believe, is at 6.6 .6 million this year. It's got a, an increasing floor, increasing by 
a hundred and a hundred and a quarter. Hundred and yeah, yep, hundred and twenty five thousand yep. each year. So that's an increasing floor and that's not impacted by the decision to right. have a lesser rate increase at this point. So this is just the revenue based one, the five percent capital improvement transfer. I saw capital improvement below That, tra that transfer number, the, the 8.688 million is the total transfers. General fund, capital improvement, and economic development. And the agenda item, Nancy puts this together, does a really nice job. It's report number four, and we basically add two, report number one, then two, and then three, and then four. Mm -hmm. um, so as things change, you actually can see their, their striking underline right in the document. Um, and we put that kind of detail that you're reading there in there just because it's it's also an education process to new commissioners and existing commissioners on how how we do things and there's a lot of there's a lot of items in our budget so it's it's a complicated budget i mean well, dave and anderson did an excellent job of explaining it i don't know if i you know even want to try and do a better job nancy <laughs> might have a few things to add but he the, never talks to me that way yeah. And then Ralph and Dave <laughs> spent a lot of time looking at uh, our wants versus our needs, and we do take a really close look at things, and we try and be as efficient and effective as we can be. And that's our culture, and that's something that we've done, and, and uh, the Budget Committee did a nice job. So well, and don't take my comments as in any way detracting from all of that, because, you know, th this is an annual issue with us, and and... And everybody who sits up on this dais, whether it's a more public service commission or the city council, wrestles with very similar issues. But there's nothing more basic than the need for electricity and water. And to that extent, we really have to be careful what we do and know that there are, in fact, impacts on our customers. And, and all I ask is that we are mindful of that. And I know that Dave and Ralph, as, as far as the budget committee, are trying their best to get this down as much as we possibly can. We've actually also had follow-up meetings with both those large customers that were here uh, the other evening. Um, and so the Pactive representative, uh, when we met with them actually today, you know, did mention the transfer. That was uh, still a concern of theirs. Um, and they're trying, you know, we're educating them on how that all works as well. Um, and then uh, Bush will be sending us a letter. We haven't received it yet, but we will get a letter and we'll respond. We'll give it to all the commissioners. But they're, they're concerned about the water rates, probably more so than electric rates. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they, during the meeting afterwards, they talked about the transfer a bit as well. So, I mean, our large, com our large customers are, you know, sophisticated enough, of course, to, you know, look at the details and, and bring up more detailed items. Bush, for instance, uh, sent their, you know, the last year, they sent a long letter from their uh, consultant that basically took our cost of service study and, you know, made some points uh, and we had to make counterpoints. We had to explain to them why we do the things we do. But they were, they had, Bush had a very sophisticated uh, list of questions and we had to respond to those. Well, and as far as Bush is concerned, for the people listening uh, to all of this at home, there was a point in time when the people in the community were wondering, why, why do we have this large water user in our community, et cetera, and so forth. Well, when you look at what has transpired over the years, Anheuser-Busch has not only been a wonderful corporate partner here in Moorhead, they've also helped the city of Moorhead build, uh, which at the time was a state-of-the-art water treatment facility because they are a large customer, but they've also put themselves in the position of being one of the best stewards that they can possibly be in terms of their water use and electrical use. And so when we work with these major customers, we are also working with people who are trying to minimize what's happening in their world as well. And Pactive, uh, you know, they are our second largest electric uh, load they have a wonderful uh, load factor, which means their load comes on and it just stays on. Uh, you know, they're helping pay for the electric infrastructure in that area, holding the rates down for everyone. Um, and they've 
been our biggest expansion over the past decade in town. So I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, but they pay a big bill and, and they're concerned about that and they want to stay in town, so. David. When, uh, when our uh, budget group met with our two uh, liaisons from the uh, council, um, it was a quick review because there's not much you know, for us to talk about in the middle of the agreement. So we talked about what, we did talk about what the floor and you know, all that stuff is, but, and, and what the payment was gonna end up being. But, but I think importantly, um, at least I think it was important, um, we have a year before we really have to start to talk about what the next agreement's gonna look like. And um, it was my proposal to the group that, that, we, that we tackle the hard issues while we've got the time to do it, because we're not really busy with some of these other things, you know, like when we were negotiating a deal. Um, the transfer continues to come up as, 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 as a big deal. Um, and, you know, as, as our uh, presentation on, um, on rates uh, during the hearing and, and in our conversations with, with the group, uh, as, as all of the numbers show us, um, we are no longer the, the deal in town. We, we, have, we have now emerged higher than, than our major competitor uh, in, the, in, in Fargo. Uh, XL is, is now a better deal than we are. Um, and you know, we, for a long time we talked about how we were the best deal. Now, you know, yeah, we're the most reliable, but we're, but we're, not, the, we're not the most economical. Um, and while we have some time to talk about the hard issues around the transfer and what, what that transfer is actually meaning to our rates and then <clears throat> what, what revision of the transfer might mean to other revenue sources, we, we as a group at least uh, agreed that maybe this would be a good time to, to really start to examine that, to, to, to tackle the issue of property tax versus transfer and, and how it is that that monthly hit to the utility bill is actually realized in payment by customers that, that are managing a budget versus the, the, the property tax bill that you just talked about that is that annual piece that for many of, of our folks ends up in an escrow account and becomes a part of a, of, of a house payment that, 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 that we then budget for. Um, but, but how, do we, how do we tackle the, the, uh, the, the difficult process of understanding what is, what is more impactful to, to our customers, what's more impactful to our property owners, and what is possible if we start to get things like that commodity price of electricity down to a point where we become a competitive player in the economic development world of the Fargo-Moorhead arena. Uh, because if we continue to push our, our rates higher and higher, we're just going to be less and less competitive and we aren't going to be able to do the kinds of things that we dream about doing as a, as a community of Moorhead. Uh, so uh, I, I'm, I'm telling you that you're really more for information than anything else. I don't have anything to propose at this point tonight except that, that we keep the working group working and that we keep on going after this, uh, uh, this, this elusive uh, you know, objective of, of making things work uh, in economic development, making things work so that our, our customers are happy with the rates that they're paying, and that we somehow come to grips with what it, what it is that we need to do to, to, to pay for government services. Well, you know, if I can add something to your rhetorical question, I, I think where we start with that, and maybe this is getting far afield from accepting a report on the proposed budget, except that all of these, <laughs> yeah, all of these issues are intertwined uh, like woven cloth, that the only way to really, I'm not gonna say resolve these issues, but to address these issues, is to have valid substantive conversations with the policymakers in, in both bodies where we, we head right for the target and say this is what we have to discuss as opposed to getting into meetings where that gets shoved off to the side. Mm -hmm. or or people's eyes glaze over because we talk about this transfer thing or whatever, substantive conversations are the only way to go into long-term planning. It's, a, it's that simple, and quite frankly, they're necessary. And so uh, 
from that standpoint, I, I still, I mean, for the people in the community who don't understand all it is that we're talking about here, I, I can assure you that this is a huge budget. Nancy and Bill and our staff work tirelessly to put this together, and we've got people on this commission who are willing to line item everything in there and take a good and hard look at all these things and to pair them back before we get into our rate making. And uh, all of this is interrelated, so. Anything further on that budget? Anything, Nancy, you want to add? I, I think we're nearing a finalized budget, so we've got, you know, all the, all the big numbers are known to us. Our purchase power suppliers both have committed and given us final rates and things like that, so we, we, I think we've got all the numbers figured out, and we'll continue to just fine tune between now and the final budget package that comes out. Your, your mic is not on. Thank you. We'll continue to do some fine tuning between now and the final budget mid-December, but I think we've, we've um, done a, a good job of listening to the customers and trying to spread our rate increases out a little bit, saving them a little bit of money this year and just having a, a more levelized approach to our rate increases over the next couple of years. Can we bring the final to the first meeting in December and maybe not have that second meeting? Um, yeah, so far there's just one meeting scheduled in, in yep. December, so yep. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have a budget report and then the final budget for you then. So you've already taken away from that discussion to have with the manager. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that meeting is actually in between. Yeah, we, we typically do December, you know, one we're meeting in December. Calendar, so, yep. you know, if, if we can just eliminate it. And I don't think we're waiting for anything from City Hall. And, and Nancy, you said something just a moment ago that is probably the most important thing that any of us sitting up here should take into consideration, and that is we need to listen to our customers. We definitely need to listen to our customers. And right now, customers across the United States are talking, <laughs> you know, and uh, I think the latest elections certainly prove that, although some of those discussions have to be more orderly. But aside from that, is there anything further? If not, I'd ask for a motion to accept this report. I move to accept the budget report. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second. All those in favor, say, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same sign. Uh, that adds uh, another item uh, to our discussion that Bill wanted to discuss, and that was to be a, to, to appoint an acting secretary or a subsecretary or whatever kind of secretary. Is, is anybody willing to fulfill that need? Because Rolf apparently is not going to make it today. Any hands on deck? Any offers? I nominate John. Is, is, is there a second? <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's is, a vote of confidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm my head. I was going to ask if there was going to be a follow-up motion to close the nominations, but I... <laughs> is, is there a second to that motion? Okay. It's is, a tough job. You have to write your name about 30 times. Well, yeah, exactly. You with the duties the, well, you will see here before you a packet of things to be signed that the chairman has already signed, waiting for the secretary to sign, and, and Ralph is not here, but, so we don't have anybody. Um, and uh, so if, if anybody is so inclined to second that motion, I, I think you, you, if, if you're so inclined, or, or Chris, if you... I'll, I'll second it. Thank you, Chris. I'll put it on you. The look on his face was... <laughs> Well, yeah, we, we really can't say much about the looks that come across John's face, but I, <laughs> no, I've got a motion. Not without consequence. I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That's the closest thing to tarring and feathering that I've seen in a long time. But, okay. Uh, that brings us down to item 10, which is to approve a grant agreement with the Minnesota Department of Health for the well televising. And I see that this has already been reviewed by... Mr. Shockley acting as our legal counsel. Um, I'm going to leave that at that for now. Um, Christopher, are you going to talk to this issue? Sure. Thank Chris you. Knudsen, Water Division Manager. Uh, we've done a number of these grants in the past four years, actually since 2012 in total. Uh, probably received about $70,000 uh, from the Minnesota Department of Health to do uh, clean water activities. Uh, last couple years what we've really been focused on is performing maintenance on all of our well fields. This is actually the last well in all of the 
um, particular well fields that we need to televise. So it's a it's a good it's a good deal for MPS. Uh, state will reimburse us the expense associated with um, performing maintenance activities associated with well six. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Chris? Would anybody inclined to approve item six? Or item ten, excuse me. Questions? Certainly. Chris, as far as just reading through this, it references city attorney review and approve the grant agreement. Oh, microphone. Just it's the reference here, the city attorney approved this. When is it appropriate for the city attorney to review documents and our own attorney to review documents? I'm confused about when that takes place. So does John review the documents or does John Shockley review the documents? Um, typically for contracts that are state contracts, we work with John Shockley to have him review uh, those type of contracts. So we've done probably in all eight contracts with the Department of Health that are very similar in nature. So um, John Shockley's reviewed all, all previous grant agreements with the Department of Health, so um, felt it was appropriate to have him review this uh, item as well. Basically on a case-by-case -case basis as far as who we use as far as to. I think we passed a policy in 2015 indicating that a general law question should be referred to the Wool Johnson firm as opposed to the Onstead firm. But I, did you have a comment? Well, I mean, we can pull the policy up, but it does say if we need to use a city attorney, that we can use a city attorney. If it's, um, you know, practical and expeditious and you know, like in this case, I mean, it's it's uh, expeditious to have them do that. So, I mean, it does say in the policy that we can use them. We used them just like Chris is talking. Um, so, other questions? With, with with all due respect, can we can we talk about this at a later item? Because it's going to come up again. I was just curious as far as to yeah, that was two of us. I was part of, I was curious part of it is a cost well. issue as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I have a motion on item 10, please? I'll make a motion to accept. The Is there a second? Okay, thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. That brings us down to item 11, to approve the utility relocation agreement with MnDOT. Chris, is this yours? Yep. Um, a little background on this. Commissioners might remember last fall, we approved a similar agreement with MnDOT for relocation work associated with the recently completed uh, diverging diamond interchange. So MPS was reimbursed for um, actually lowering the water main across the interstate um, to the tune of about $230,000 uh, from MnDOT. So a really good, really good process, really good project um, re just recently completed uh, this year. In a similar vein, um, this project is actually, uh, MnDOT is working between 30th and 40th Avenue South on 8th Street, um, basically trying to relocate some of the driveways along that thoroughfare, try to uh, decrease access from local um, traffic. Uh, it turns out one of the driveways they want to relocate is right where one of our hydrants is, so they'd like us to move it. Um, we requested that they reimburse us for that relocation to the tune of uh, $27,050. So we'll be, it's a, a fairly simple project, but um, we requested that MnDOT reimburse us for that, and they generated an agreement to compensate MPS for the, that relocation. Okay. So. Any questions? Could I have a motion on item 11, please? Uh, move to approve the uh, relocation agreement. With MnDOT? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Brings us down to item 12, which is to approve a professional services and escrow agreement for engineering review and inspections of the I-94 water tower. Yeah. I'll speak to this one as well. Um, 
similar, uh, commissioners also might remember back in 2014, we did a similar escrow agreement and professional services for tele telecommunication work on the Oakport Tower. So oftentimes what uh, telecommunication providers will do is th they're upgrading at a scale of every two to three years on a lot of these locations. So MPS maintains a variety of leases on our towers whereby the telecommunications tenant reimburse MPS to the tune of about $20,000 a year on average. Um, in the case of I-94, uh, Sprint recently just notified us they'd like to do an upgrade on the I-94 water tower. We are okay with the uh, proposed installation. However, they're gonna do some significant reinforcement of the handrail uh, with some kicker, they're called kicker um, bars and plates, basically making it difficult to navigate the top of the tower um, getting the hatch and things like that somewhat difficult. So we wanted to, uh, they had their own structural review completed as part of the uh, application to us to install the new equipment. We wanted a third party to look at that uh, proposed installation, make sure that it met uh, not only safety guidelines for MPS, but uh, also inspection of the, the welding and all of the painting and coating associated with the installation of the proposed sprint upgrade. So the ESCO agreement essentially is um, Sprint would, uh, Sprint actually, a, a subconsultant of Sprint, selective site consultants, pays MPS um, in an escrow account $10,500. We would then subsequently pay the third party to look at the installation and make sure that the installation is correct. The reason that there's an escrow account um, is typically because, the same as the case of the Oakport water tower, the uh, KLM doesn't like to work with um, the third party vendors of the telecommunications providers because oftentimes they just don't pay them. So that's why they want us involved uh, for the project as an escrow agent. If I, I, I two things I, I want to address here. First is the, the engineering related issues and then we'll address the escrow agreement. Uh, number one, at what point do we say to the telecommunications industry that we have enough gadgets on the top of our water tower and our primary purpose here is to provide water to the, the community and we want to have a safe and workable area on the top of that tower for our staff and we really don't care about your telecommunications. I mean, are we getting to that point? I, I don't think so. I mean, in Oakport, um, they did a, we did a lot of reinforcement on that Oakport water tower to make sure that that equipment was not only um, safely supported but that we could navigate it um, safely and the, the consultant at, at the time KLM was a consultant for that project as well had some good suggestions to help us with the proposed installation make sure it was done properly make sure MPS could access the tower properly so I feel comfortable moving forward with it um, we've actually removed some of the equipment off of I-94 tower as a result of a lease terminating I that. Yeah. yeah so it's actually um, compared to a year and a half ago it's probably half as much stuff on there um, as, there, as there used to be, but um, the SSC and Sprint wanted to do some additional reinforcement on the handrail, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay, uh, I, my major concern is the safety of our workers uh, right. who, who go up there or anybody who goes up there. And that's and really the intent of the, yeah. the third party review. And I'm assuming that all of the lease agreements that we have with these telecommunications providers clearly spell out that the priority here is more in public service, not Sprint. They do, they do, they, they explicitly do state that. Um, one thing relative to this item, we will be uh, likely bringing back a, a revised lease agreement that accommodates, um, if we approve this item, accommodates the new equipment and accommodates some. Um, and increase the cost to the, to the tenant? Uh, in the case of the Sprint um, for I-84, our, our lease there is, is very competitive, I would say, in terms of how much money we receive from, from that tenant. There's other leases that are, uh, we receive less income from that uh, we'd like to increase those amounts. However, the Sprint, I feel, is an adequate amount. We do have to make some structural changes to the lease agreement. I can assure you when they put that installation at the top of the tower, they will increase their revenue. <laughs> that's how that works. Well, yeah. I mean, and that's normally what goes Why into that have, equation. Right. Exactly. So I want to go on to the escrow agreement, and, I, and the reason, and that's why I asked you to delay your conversation, John, for a moment. 
I can see that uh, about the fourth paragraph down, it indicates that this escrow agreement has been reviewed by our legal counsel, who in this case was an assistant to Mr. Shockley. And you did a great job of defining for us what an escrow agreement is. We get the money in, we're supposed to do something with that money, we're sort of holding it in trust kind of a thing. Paragraph three of the escrow agreement itself says, and I quote, MPS's duties are limited to those specifically set out in this agreement, end quote. What are they? Basically, the SSC will pay us and we'll- That send, part's in here. Yeah. But it doesn't say what our duties are. It doesn't say that we're to disperse funds and under what circumstances we are to disperse funds. To me, that's a fatal flaw in this agreement, which was reviewed. It, it does specify the KLM engineering in the second whereas under the con under the contract with KLM engineering. So SSC has been privy to our negotiation with KLM and are aware of the contract uh, okay. before you in this agreement. Th th that says that in the recitals, the agreement, however, does not specify the duties of the escrow agent. That's That's a flaw it should specify what our duties are. I'm being picky here, but I won't sign it in the form that it says because it has to specify what we're to do with those funds, otherwise we hold them forever. We can certainly bring it back with revised language. I would appreciate that. It will, it will, if, um, I'll have to, it, it may affect the timeliness of the installation, but I think we can make it work. Okay. Oh, I, I would be more than happy to accept a um, resolution of this group that gives me the authority to sign this once appropriate changes have been made so we don't affect your timeline. But when we, when we seek to have somebody review these documents, we should review it for content, and that's important to me. I spent 40 years drafting escrow agreements. This isn't a very good one. We can, if we could approve it and with revised language, uh, yeah. that would be appreciated because then we can keep the timeline moving for okay. Sprint. John? I would, would agree with that as long as we get your appropriate revision or, or your appropriate language okay. of what needs to be changed or added to that. Thank you. Who's going to do the legal work this time? Uh, well, if need be, I think I can myself. And well, you probably could. I understand that you've been practicing for a while. Yes, I have. I'm an old man. One, one technical component to the motion. We do um, need a task order agreement with KLM. This, was a, this came about right before our commission meeting, so we didn't have a lot of time to get that task order agreement done with KLM. So we'll need to um, approve that task order agreement as part of the motion. Well, I think that all the parties to an escrow agreement should be delineated in the agreement and, and the duties of the person holding the funds have to be specified. Uh, right, this is a separate component. So we have a proposal from KLM. I saw that. Yeah, but not a task order agreement with them. Okay. It needs to be generated. It's not going to affect the escrow agreement substant. It's not going to affect it. It's okay. All I'm concerned about right now is the escrow agreement. Right, right. I, I realize that, but I just wanted to say that before the motion was made. Yeah, we can. Yeah, there's a letter that goes along with this from KLM that requires our signature. As a matter of fact, yeah. would that do the trick, Chris? Yeah. yeah. Ask for our approval on the letter. Yeah. Um, well, we'll have to sign the task order agreement subsequent to the approval or following the approval. Okay. So, um, so the task order agreement is really going to just reflect the proposal that was in here. Okay. And you're asking for their approval. Correct. Was that your motion? Yes. That's what I thought. Is there a second to that motion? That was the motion. Yeah. What, whatever Chris wanted. <laughs> That's a little open. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's the my understanding that we are going to approve the escrow agreement with the additional language that Ken is recommending. Correct. 
and that it would be reviewed again by legal counsel to ensure that it is appropriate or Mr. Norman can be considered as legal counsel. No. 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 I don't. I want. I don't want to be legal counsel, but I, okay. you can give me the authority to determine whether the land, language is satisfactory. Okay. Then be re reviewed by the president yeah. to ensure that the language is appropriate. No, I'm here as a policymaker, not a lawyer. Okay. And, okay. and is there a second? Yeah. And, the and approve a task order number one with KLM reflective of the proposal submitted. That was the rest of it. Yeah. Okay. That's not the other part that he already said. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second? Chris. Yes. <laughs> Second. Okay. All those in favor <laughs> signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed the same sign. Thank you, all of you. Uh, this goes down with the, the subject is sometimes when you seek those review that you don't pay for, you actually get what you pay for. Noted. Okay. Duly noted. Okay. Um, that brings us down to item 13 to award the bid for water treatment plant lab remodeling. What's this? We've talked about this a couple times. Okay. Um, really what this is, we've added several staff um, over the past 20 years. Ken did a nice job describing our state of the art water treatment plant um, when it was built and kind of what it's become. Uh, we're looking to generate a little bit more space uh, for, for additional staff that we've accrued since 1995 to accommodate for growth and and additional requirements being imposed by the state laboratory. So our state laboratory that's in the existing water treatment plant, we wanna separate basically and build a new laboratory that's separate from our existing state certified laboratory. Um, so the intent there is to add some more space for operators and, and really kind of minimize the amount of traffic in our state certified laboratory so that we can uh, reduce any potential opportunities for contamination. Okay. Um, generally, we got a lot of interest in the project because of the time it was bid. Uh, we bid this um, just recently and uh, received about eight bids for the project, so um, about $10,000 under the estimate for the project. A lot of interest just because it's winter work inside. People are very interested in doing it. Um, I think I asked this question before. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and ask again. Uh, with this kind of investment and, and, and putting together this kind of a lab that is, is going to be 21st century and you know, state of the art, is there, an, is there an opportunity for us to work for, for other communities um, and, and generate you know, some fee um, yeah. um, I, material here? And we, we do get some interest from, Excuse me, we do get some interest from other communities to do commercial samples. We have to turn those away right now because of our existing um, certification with uh, the state and kind of our existing quality assurance manuals. Uh, we're, working, we're working towards that. I think it is a possibility and a feasible thing that we could do to generate a little bit of revenue, but it requires, it requires a substantial amount of work to kind of get our, some of our quality manuals updated and um, get some of the provisions in place to do something like that. But there has been, we do get a lot of inquiries from the public or from other cities saying, hey, can you guys run our samples? And, and right now we have to I assume a lot of the away. smaller communities could use that mm -hmm. service. Yes, they could. Okay. It's a, it's a desired service. I think we ought to be looking for things like that. As, as we go through you know, a, a lot of our operations, we ought to be looking for ways that we can provide services that, that, that would generate you know, some, some fee revenues, but also heighten our leadership Mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in the greater community and the, the surrounding area. So, you know, if, if we can, uh, it, it's, it, just, it just, just speaks opportunities to me. So. Yeah. Okay. okay. Could I have a motion to approve this? So Item moved. 13. Is so there a second, please? Second. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed the same sign. That motion carries. We next have a farm lease agreement. Uh, it, for a very small uh, plot of land. Very small on this. So as we purchase land in the north side of Morehead for sludge ponds, we have allowed the neighboring um, farmers to farm that land before we can put it into production for sludge ponds or wind turbines or anything else. We are squeezing them out, but for next year. Next year we do, he has agreed that he would still be willing to plant about 13 acres Kay. of that farmland on the south side of the road 
from where the wind turbines and the community wind um, is stationed. So we would like you to consider renewing that lease for one year. Okay. Any further discussion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. That brings us down to item 15, which is to approve the actuarial services with Hildy. I think that was fairly self-explanatory. Uh, could I have a motion, please? Is there a second? Aye. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same sign. Item 16 was something that I asked to be placed on our agenda. And years ago, uh, while I was <laughs> still a young person, uh, we, we had asked that the city council provide us with people who were willing to serve as our liaisons from the city council so that I won't say that we could educate them because that's not really what we do, but so that we could at least keep the lines of communication as open as possible between this body and the uh, city council. And I've got to say, in the last couple of years, uh, both Heidi Durand and Chuck Hendrickson have done a terrific job in carrying our message to the City Council. And for that, I personally thank you, Heidi. And the results of our labors, that agreement on the transfer that uh, was alluded to earlier in this evening in our meeting is monumental, uh, at least from my perspective. We no longer argue about the transfer. We discuss it. We no longer have to come to the last meeting of the year wondering what the city council is going to do or what we're going to do because things are already in a pattern where they're taken care of. And as David indicated, we, we need to have other substantive discussions on other issues that face us. And with that being in the background, and since we're the ones that asked for liaisons to begin with, I would like to address a letter to the city council and to the mayor asking that your term and that of Mr. Hendrickson be extended as our liaisons uh, so that we can continue what has begun in the past. With, with your approval, of course. And uh, to that extent, I asked Bill to put this on our agenda for discussion. And if somebody else wants to talk to the issue, I'd be more than happy to listen. Anybody? Well, I, I'd be glad to start out. I, I, I'm one of uh, the, 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 the pair of us that work pretty closely with these folks. And um, um, a, a couple of points. I have one revision that, that, that I'd like to, to, to make to the, to the draft letter. Uh, because you know, I I like words like great and so forth, but in the second line there it says we've enjoyed a great working relationship, and I just think it's more than that. Uh, what we've enjoyed is a very productive uh, working relationship, and you know, great says some things, but I think productive is is stronger in this case because what we've been doing over the last uh, several years now as 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 a group and as a working a smaller working group is we we've, we've been doing the business of. Of, of our ratepayers and our citizens, and I think we've we've, we've done it pretty well. Um, I would also just uh, I, 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 I've got to say that um, it hasn't always been easy. And if and if there's any if there's any idea that uh, that, well, that we can, tough. that we just get together and 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 backslap and and, ag and agree easily to things, you know that that's a that's a very mistaken notion because. Um, uh, Heidi can be pretty tough, <laughs> and when and, and when Heidi's not here being tough, then Chuck is. Um, it's, it, it, and and these, she has these, put us in our place more than once. Well, these have been <laughs> tough to see. Well, I, 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 I don't even recall the topic, but I remember one night Heidi was all by herself, and uh, the rest of the rest of the room was was a ginner. and um, it didn't change her. <laughs> she she stuck by her guns, and and you know what? We're still friends. So. You know, one of the things that, that's really, really awesome about this relationship is that while we've had disagreements and such, we've we've continued to persevere and work through some tough, some tough topics. Yeah, we have, and we have some more to do. And um, uh, I, I think it's very important that we ask the city, the city council to return these two because, uh, again, we have more work to do. They're well versed in what it is that we have been been working toward and what we're what we're uh, uh, continuing to work on. And, and to start over again, uh, I, I think it, it means that we're going to have a year of orientation again and, and a year of, of kind of figuring out what the tasks are. But 
but we don't have that with with the, with the current group. So I, I think it's important that the city council return these 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 two uh, into this relationship uh, with us. And uh, and I've been I've, I've already been expressing that to, to members of the council um, uh, that, that will listen to me. So uh, that, that being said. Uh, yeah, sort of I, like I think the, it's a great idea. Sort of like that assistant secretary position in the tar and the feathers. Are you willing for us to send this along? I, I uh, appreciate all the, the kind words. Um, well, I, we'll forget those. You know that. <laughs> I am honored that you uh, actually have put together a letter like this. Um, you know, I, it's, um, I have enjoyed the work, and I, and I wish to continue the work, so I, I appreciate this. And I can't speak for Chuck, but yet I think I can in a little way. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he, he would feel the same, that he would like his he would like to continue uh, working with the group as well. Okay. John, were you going to make a comment? I, and, and for the people at home, um, I can assure you that there have been difficult discussions that have held, been held between our liaisons and, and this body. And just as, as Dave indicated, they've been fruitful. They have, uh, they've been productive. We've been able to accomplish a lot of things that had not been accomplished over many years of, of trying. And so to that extent, uh, I too feel strongly about this. To, to the ex And we don't normally meddle in the business of the council, but we're the ones that ask for liaisons to begin with. And if we've got a good working relationship, which I think we do, um, I too want it to continue. So does anybody else, anybody want to speak against this? Okay. That having been said, could I, uh, have some kind of a motion on approving this letter. Did you get the revision? Okay. Um, I, I would move that we approve the letter with the uh, suggested revision and uh, send it on to the city council. And I think it's important to be sent to, to the mayor and the members of the council individually. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same sign. That motion carries. There's no further business to come before this august body. Uh, on December 13th, we will meet again, and I'm assuming that we'll have our rates ready to be approved at that point. And uh, other comments notwithstanding during this, this evening's meeting, I, we truly appreciate the work that the Budget Committee does on those rates. Anybody have any comments for us? Please feel free to send them in. Uh, John? Just uh, one last comment. I think in uh, several times you have expressed interest in inviting Cindy from ADA mm -hmm. to attend seminars. Mm -hmm. And it is my understanding that she and Bill have been in this discussions and in March there's going to be one with utilities and hopefully we'll be able to uh, have her attend that. The only thing of question is if she goes to that, then does that become an EDA expense or is that a Moorhead public service expense? We placed that in our budget, and we intended that to be a more public service expense. And we, we've talked about that and made that invitation or extended that invitation many times in the past, and I think we've always asked that it be one of and our... Just for clarification, she and the ADA, I don't know if she had shared that information, so we just want to make sure that's communicated to her so we can pass that on to the... Sure, ADA. yep. Okay. Bill, and which session is that? I'm not sure what that, you know, we were looking at. Uh, There's several. Every yeah, year. there was the other one that was more communication and marketing, uh, but it also included economic development. But I think uh, APPA in the past had a separate economic development yep. uh, conference. And this may be a separate economic development conference from APPA, or it might be another one. I mean, as long as it, it, it kind of helps uh, Cindy understand how we operate, that's kind of our intent for paying for that type of. Uh, uh, training. Um, we are also inviting uh, Cindy to our, you know, at least some of our lunches uh, that we have with our large customers, and she was at our lunch today with Pactive, so, so we're doing that as well. Anything further? This meeting is adjourned.